Hey everyone, this is Jaime with Roosters Comics coming to you with this week's Spec of the Week, the week of December 25th, 2022. Merry Christmas, everybody. I've got three awesome books I'd like to share with you today. All three of them are coming from the Key Collector's Trending, trending 20 and Hot 10 list. There was really nothing in cover price that was like peaking my interest for the most part. Um, I was thinking at first, possibly Spider-Man 2099 or, you know, the Spider-Verse books, but... I really don't think though. I mean, Spider-Man 29 possibly, but I'll, I'll do that when more when Into the Spider-Verse gets closer to us. That's a book for another day. But that being said, I've got three awesome books, one Marvel, two DCs, and let's go ahead and get into it. First book of the day is The Century, issue one from Marvel Comics, and this book came out in 2000, so it's a very, very modern book, 22 years old pretty much. First appearance of Robert Reynolds as The Century. Now we know the Sentry is coming out in as the villain, I want to say, in the Thunderbolts movie. This is one of those books that you can get in at a high grade raw at a very affordable price and potentially make some money back if it comes back at 9.8. Let's go look at some of these raw grades. So as for raw copies, as you can see here, you can get a good raw copy for anywhere between about $70, $80 to about $111. Bucks. That's, I honestly think if for major keys, or not even major keys, any key, if you, you can get your book and you see the 9.8s at least double or triple its value, I think that's a very, very good buy. And you'll see with this particular book, that's the case. Now, who is the Sentry? I mean, the Sentry is like this OP character that Marvel created. I guess that's kind of like their Superman. Now, will this book hold long term? I don't know. It's one of those things like how the movie will go. But let's go ahead and look at the 9.8s first and then we'll get into my, my thoughts on the book. So as you can see right here, the 90 day average is about $352. So like I said, if you can get a high grade raw for about a hundred bucks, it comes back a 9.8, you're at least doubling your money on this investment. Well, with slabbing costs about 150, so you see you're making 200 bucks. And as we can see, the scale here is all over the place. When the book first came out, guys, it was 48 bucks. It was selling well. And then right around 2016, you saw a big old spike where it jumped to 232 from 50. I don't know if that's when they announced it or when speculators were thinking maybe the century's coming. There's a whole lot, a lot of things that could have caused what this. What, there's a lot of things that could have caused this book to spike. I honestly don't know what it was. But then as you can see, it here went to 222, climbed all the way to 342, it dipped all the way back down to 275. Started going up into the $500 range, and now it's starting to teeter, tater down, and it's starting to pick back up again. This year alone, we've had 51 copies of the book sold. And if we look here in the month of December, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven copies. We've got a low of 325 and a high of 411. Now, once again, this is one of those books where if you're looking to make a quick flip, I would say invent, get, the, get the raw book. If you can find a really, really high-grade raw book, and it take the gamble, get it slabbed. If it comes back a 9.8, you, you hit gold. As for 9.6s, give me one quick second. Let me minimize this. So you can see 9.6 is a major drop off. This is a lot of, this is how it is a lot of the times with modern books. 9.8 is what you want because there's an abundance of them. So you might as well want to get the highest grade copy of it. Now with this particular character, if they do him right and he becomes popular, this book is just going to do nothing but go up. If they don't serve do him any justice or if he's just a one and done character, this is one of those books that as the movie approaches, it's going to slowly, slowly climb. And then once the movie comes out and if he doesn't do anything, it's just going to crash. So it's one of those things where you got to calculate your risk. And that being said, here's the disclosure, guys. This is just my opinion. This is not financial advice. Do what you like buy what you like. This is just how I interpret and view the comic book market today. So with Century, is it a great long-term hold? I would probably say in my opinion, no, but I could be wrong. If once again, if the movie comes about, when he comes out in Thunderbolts and he's awesome, and then he gets his own solo film and he, the solo film does good, this I'll be dead wrong. This book will just do nothing but go up. But I honestly think it's probably gonna be one of those things where if you really, really want the book, I would either jump on it now before the prices get too expensive or wait till after the movie and the movie comes and the prices come back down. And those are my thoughts on this book. Let's go on to book number two. And book number two today is Tales of the Teen Titans number 44 from DC Comics in 1984. And this is the very first appearance of Dick Grayson as Nightwing. Now, Dick Grayson obviously was Batman's first Robin and his very first appearance is Stupid Money. 
but his first appearance of Nightwing is actually quite affordable. As you can see, high-grade raw copies you can get right around between $111. And I'm going to be honest with you, you probably get, if you really want a 9.8 candidate, you're probably going to spend about $120 to $130 on it. But once again, this is one of those books that if you get it raw and the 9 point, and it comes back in a 9.8, you're going to at least double your money. And as you can see, 9.8 for this is averaging, it's trending down, which like a lot of the books of this, of this, a lot of the grades of this particular character is. And it's a 403, which again, it's almost triple. So if you get it for 130, $50 grading, so it's 180 investment, you're looking at a $400 book. And with Nightwing, I think Nightwing is a lot, uh, it's a much more safer DC key because they've done so much with him since he's come out. And he's got the show on the Titans, which is okay. I, I actually watch Titans and I think it's okay, but he still hasn't had his live action come up and I guess you want to say his real live action debut where it can make this book really explode and the fact that this book has its value the way it is right now tells you that the character is really good if his book is holding at 400 bucks at a 9.8 so as you can see when the book first came out it was it was $32 key because no one knew you know it's like oh this is Nightwing it's probably one and done he'll go back to being Robin but as time slowly went on, you know, $68, then it went up to 90, and as you can see, it's 105, it slowly climbed up 164, peaked here at 370 back in 2013, dipped a little, then it went back to 293, dipped a little under $200, fluctuating 250, and then boom, comic boom, 544, 588, and then it's starting to dip, now it's starting to do a little, little uptick right there. And if we look here, 2022, 71 copies have sold so far of this year of this book and the month of December we got three one for two three twenty five one for four hundred and one for four twenty Now if you want a nine point eight of this particular book I would say anywhere between I think the three twenty five is honestly a steal and, the, and this three hundred that was sold in November is a steal I think this book is somewhere anywhere between three fifty and four hundred dollars Anywhere in that sweet spot. It's, it's right where you want this nine point eight um, Do I think this book has great long-term potential? Yes uh, Nightwing is a, an integral part of the Teen Titans. The Teen Titans are very popular. Not right now, but I'm talking about the OG Teen Titans. The new Teen Titans is is a mess. Um, and Nightwing's got his, right now, his ongoing solo series, which I think, though DC books aren't selling great, it's one of the better selling DC books. Uh, what I, I don't can give you numbers exactly, but... I know my brother reads Nightwing, he enjoys it, and I know a lot of other people who, who are reading the Nightwing series and are really enjoying it. If the Nightwing ever gets his due in James Gunn's new DC, this book could even climb even higher. But I do think that this book is a safe investment. If you get this book and you have it in a 9.8, I think 10 years from now this book is definitely going to be more expensive than what it was now. It's not going to see major crashes like some other books. I think this character is popular enough to where the book's going to hold its value and... He's a really cool character, so I know my brother's got, we got two books right now that we sent off to CGC of this book. One, if one of them comes back at 9.8, my brother's keeping it in his PC. Um, and then the other one will just sell for whatever it comes back as. Hopefully both come back as 9.8 and then that'll be awesome for both of us. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think this book is a great investment and if you own it, good for you. If you want it, like I said, um, if you want to get a high grade raw and take the risk, you know, right around one one. 20 to 140 130 to 140 in that range is where you probably want to buy it. anything lower than that you're running the risk of it not being a 9.8 p a lot of people say that books are near mint and you know they'll sell for like 90 dollars, but it, they'll see one or two spine ticks or the, there'll be a crease somewhere where you can't really see it you know this is one of those books you know with comics and raw books i think I really think price, what well, price is what you pay and value is what you get. So the high, most of the time, the higher the price on a raw comic, comic, the better chances you have of getting a 9.8. That being said, guys, let's go to the final book of the day, and it's another DC book, and that is Batman Adventures 12 from DC from 1993, and this is the very first appearance of Harley Quinn. Now, this is probably the most expensive of all three books that we have, and if I've done this book before in my videos, guys, I'm sorry. Uh, I haven't had a chance to look through things, but I didn't think, I know I, I talked about her before during my little, um, Instagram streams, but I never did it. Don't think I ever did a video of her. So, but let's go ahead and jump into it for a high grade raw copy of this book. You're going to at least spend anywhere between 800 and a thousand dollars. It says a thousand dollars here. And I think thousand dollars is probably as good as you're going to get. 
Um, if you can find it somewhere between the eight nine hundred dollar range, and they're saying near mint plus, and you could expect the book, I think that's where truly the value of this book is. But once again, as you can see, nine point eight slabs of this particular book are double what the raw copies are. So if you can find a high grade raw, get it graded, comes back a nine point eight, you freaking scored, and good for you. Now let's go ahead and look at the 9.8s. See 9.8s with this book right now also trending down. Once again, you know my thoughts on when the books are trending down, this is when you should buy it. Um, and you're looking at $2,452.90 or $2 day average. As you can see here, when this book first came out, it was a $52, $52 book. Then it jumped up in 2008 to 131 140 And I think what really made this book popular was Batman the Animated Series. Harley Quinn was huge in that. I know that's the first. That was my first introduction to Harley Quinn was seeing her in the cartoons, and and then once Margot Robbie took her, you know, reprised the role or took over the role in Suicide Squad, this book hit all all new time highs. You see, it's eight hundred, eighteen hundred dollars, and honestly, this is where I think the low of the book is, eighteen hundred. I I think other than that, you're you're never gonna find it. Like right here, see two thousand, two thousand nineteen, eighteen, and then it bounced all the way up here to three four thousand back in the comic boom. And now it's starting to price correct. And I honestly think this book has a lot more price correcting to do. So you can see 59 copies of this book have sold. And we're opening up here in the month of December. As you can see, highs, 4,000, lows, and 2,100. In December alone, 22, 23, 22, and 26. I think this book, this true market value, in my opinion, is somewhere between uh, $2,000 and $2,500 is a good price point for this book. Uh, Harley Quinn is super popular. Um, I think that once James, since James Gunn is doing a reboot of the DC Universe, I don't think we're going to see Harley Quinn in live action for a minute. So I think this book has a lot more dipping to go. So I'm thinking that this book can get closer to 200 maybe even into the $1,800 range if it's an extremely long time before she comes back out again. But I don't see it ever falling lower than $1,800. This book, she is too popular of a character, and I think collectors in general just won't allow that book to hit that low. It's it's too popular of a book to not hold value, I guess is the best way to put it. Uh, Ten years from now, do I think this book is a good investment? Absolutely. Once again, Harley Quinn is one of the most popular DC antiheroes. I mean, she was the Joker's first love. Now she's kind of her own independent person, and she's hooked up with Ivy. Um, she's just got a huge following. I mean, if you go to any of y'all go to Comic Cons, how many Harley Quinn cosplays have you seen? I mean, they're all over the place. So I think this book's a great, great, great investment. I personally do want one for my PC, even though we sold that one of our first books that we ever sold. When we, me and my brother started this business, was actually a nine six of this book. And I remember if I told my brother if it came back a nine eight, it's going to be really hard for me to let this book go because it's kind of one of my few DC keys I ever wanted to keep. Was first appearance of Harley Quinn. I just think she's a really cool character. My brother's like, no, if it comes back at 9.8, we're selling it. And I was like, I get you, brother. I get you. So hopefully one day in the future, I will own this book. Um, those of you who do own it, congratulations. I ain't hating on you. Those of you that are looking to sell this book, um, I honestly say now's the time to hold on. I think, like I said, I think that this book's going to continue to dip. She is going to come back to the DCU. So when she does, this book will climb again. Or... If there's a really awesome story that DC writes and she's a main character in it, that may cause a spike in this book too. Either or. But right now, guys, I say just hold on to it for a little bit because right now it's they're still price correcting. And if you do want this book, right now is probably the best time to buy it or maybe a few months from now as the book continues to dip. And that's it, guys. Those are my specs of the week for this week. Once again, I just want to wish all you a Merry Christmas, and I want to thank everyone for watching my videos. Uh, please, guys, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. That really helps. Remember, guys, once I get to the 150 subscriber mark, I will be announcing what my 9.8 slab giveaway is for the 500 subscriber mark. Other than that, also don't forget to check out the eBay store at Roosters Comics. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And once again, guys, keep your ear out for that rooster crowing, because when the rooster crows, that means a good deal's out there. Jaime Hernandez, Roosters Comics, signing out. Merry Christmas, everyone.